Hi, I'm Kat. And I'm Izzy. And we're the assistant designers at the Royal Shakespeare Company. Welcome to the Midsummer Festival. We hope you've seen some lovely things already and we know there are lots of brilliant things coming up. The RSC is a whole collection of pieces for you dotted throughout the day, all inspired by Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. The first thing is this workshop where we're going to show you how to make a fairy den at home and how to decorate it with beautiful homemade fairy lanterns. Everything we're going to show you should be doable with things you have at home. You can also find making packs and written instructions for the lanterns on the Royal Shakespeare Company website, rsc.org.uk. We hope you have fun making your fairy den with us. Obviously campsites are closed and there aren't any outdoor festivals happening at the moment, but maybe you could camp out tonight at home in your fairy den. Or snuggle down into it to watch the rest of the festival. So, first Kat is going to show you ideas for constructing a den or bower and then I'm going to take you through making some beautiful lanterns. For the den you will need How to make a fairy den Step 1. Gather your supplies It's time to hunt around your house To hold your den together you will need string pegs or clips and some safety pins You'll need blankets and sheets for the walls and roof, pillows and cushions to make it comfy and space it out, and books to weight things down. At the end of the video, I'll be giving you ideas for how to decorate. I'll be using bunting, flowers, fairy lights, and paper cut out fairy shapes, but you could use anything you want to make your den special. Step two, building your den. I'm going to show you four different ways to make a den. The canopy, the A-frame, a chair fort, and the teepee. You could use any of the techniques to make yours, whatever suits your space. If it's nice weather outside, you could also build a den in your garden using garden furniture, trees, or your washing line. The canopy. You need to find two points to run a string between. Sturdy furniture or door hinges make great anchors for this. Make sure the string is tight and whatever you're tying it to is secure. Next, use chairs or a sofa to make the back wall and drape a blanket across it. Now we're making the canopy. A lightweight bed sheet or tablecloth is best for this. Peg it out across the string. Then pull the loose end towards the back wall. You can secure it with books or attach it to your furniture. Once we've done this, use two more sheets to make the side walls. Start from the back corners and peg them to the top sheet. Where there are gaps, simply peg the sheets into place. Try to leave the loose ends at the front. You can fold these around and peg to the string to make an entrance flap.
VA frame. Again, we need to run a line between two points. If there's nowhere solid on the wall, you could use chairs and a broomstick to hold your string up and attach the other end to sturdy furniture. If you're using chairs to support the roof, make sure it's weighed down so it doesn't tip over. Big heavy books make great weights. When your line is up, all you need to do is peg two sheets lengthways to the line. Pull the sides of the tent out and secure them with cushions or pillows. Practical and cosy. The chair fort. You need four to six high back chairs. Arrange them at the corners of your den with the backs facing inwards. You could also use two sofas back to back or any other furniture you have. Lay a blanket or sheet over the chair backs to create your walls and secure with pegs or books. Once this is done, arrange a sheet between the den sides to create your back wall and secure with pegs. The final step is to lay a lightweight sheet across the walls, creating a ceiling. Again, secure with pegs or books. get comfy. The teepee. This is the last of our dens and please make sure an adult helps you with this one. Take two sheets, lightweight as possible, and join the corners, making sure they're aligned lengthways. Attach a string to the joined sheets. Find a hanging point. Sturdy light fitting could do, or if you're outside, you could use the branches of a tree. Please make sure it's strong though. Hang the sheet so that the short edge of the sheet touches the ground. Next, join your sheets together with pegs along the longest side. Pull the sides of the tent out as far as you can and set in place with cushions.
wieder dann. Step 3. Now we're ready to decorate. Since this is a fairy den inspired by Titania's bower in A Midsummer Night's Dream, I'm using flowers, foliage and bunting that I found at home. Use whatever you can find or get arty and make your own decorations. I've cut out some fairy shapes from dark coloured paper and pinning them to the outside of the tent so that they cast beautiful shadows inside. You could make stars, flowers or any shape you like. Try to find a flat bit of sheet for the best effects. Put blankets and cushions down to make it comfy and add fairy lights to create a cosy glow inside. In the next workshop, Izzy will show you how to make moon lanterns at home, but here's some I made earlier. Enjoy your den. How to make a fairy lantern. And here it is, made mainly out of a box, a phone with a torch and some paper. All things you can find at home. Remember, you can find the full list of things you'll need and written instructions on the Royal Shakespeare Company website rsc.org.uk Here goes! So the first thing you're going to need is a cardboard box and uh, the easiest thing I found was a cereal box I wouldn't recommend this flavour uh, but pretty much any size as long as it's really thin card uh, Some of the other ones I've made have been out of much smaller boxes so you can adapt it depending on what's in your house Now deconstruct the box you have to take it apart and that's fairly easy if you can find the seams. There's one along one edge that's the longer side and one along the short edge. So you can prise it apart with your fingers but if you're struggling to do that and you do want to do it very delicately, that is what the spoon is for. So you take the blunt end of the spoon and you basically jimmy it. Across the side of the box. Next, cover the box. Because we're doing a night sky, it could be dark blue, depending on what you can find in your house. I'm going to be covering it with black card, but you could paint it black. You could colour it in with a pen or with a crayon. Anything really does the trick. But I thought this was quite a tricky way, so I'd show it in case this is what you have at home. So, if you're colouring it in or painting it, I would do it on the blank side because uh, it will soak up the paint better and you won't have to hide all of this colour. But as I am gluing, my card, I'm going to do it on this side because it's a bit more waterproof so the card won't warp when I get all the glue on there. So if you make sure you at least glue one skinny bit, one big bit and another skinny bit. If you can't cover all of that it doesn't matter because we'll make sure that one of those big sections is just on the back so you won't see it at all. Messy, messy. You just want to use PVA here. You don't need to water it down at all because you'll make the card go all wobbly. You want to place it on. Okay. Push it down, make sure it's nice and firmly in position. It's a bit of a messy job to make sure you've got something newspapers or a plastic sheet or bin bag just to protect the table. 
we need to cut out the excess black. So all along there, so with our scissors. So there we have it, cut to size. Making the moon. Find a bowl that you can draw around as a stencil. Now you want the bowl to be smaller than your original box because you don't want to end up cutting something way out beyond those perimeters. So I decided on this size. So place it on your cardboard. Let's find a pencil. Okay. So the best way to do this, because it's really awkward, I find, is if you very carefully, without cutting your fingers, make a little hole in the middle. Okay. And then, rather than going all the way around the outline yet, you can make a cross cut in the middle because you just want to make room for your hand in that hole to be able to move around the outside of the shape. So cross like so, which means that you can manipulate that and not worry about ripping accidentally. And then just follow the circle edge. We have our moon cut. Now for a silhouette. You can print off one of the pictures in the pack if you don't want to draw anything. Or if you don't like drawing but think you want to give it a go, you can trace your own by putting a printed out image behind your paper, putting your A4 paper over the top and just putting it on a window. And you, the light shines through so you can see exactly what you're drawing. So I've traced the outline that I want, but I want to draw some of my own patterns. You just want to create a black image on a piece of ordinary printer paper and this is what the light will shine through to create a silhouette. I want to stick it inside. So I've got all this waste paper so I'm going to have to chop that down definitely. So... But to be cautious when you're cutting, you don't want to accidentally cut too much. Which I did do when I was trialing this. It's a real pain you have to redo your drawing. Okay, perfect size. But I find, because my nails are not very long, I always lose the end of sellotape. So, have my trusty mug, always just leave that ready to go. Then you don't have to keep picking at it hundreds of times. Last piece. Next up, a little tin foil. We want it on the opposite side. So on the back there, so it pings all of the light back at that image. So we get our tin foil. You can cut it quite rough because no one's going to be able to see the inside of the box, so it doesn't matter if it rips a bit. We want the shiny side up. And we get our trusty tape dispenser. And just take that in place. Now this is the fun bit. If you've had a particularly bad day, get ready to feel good. Punching a starry sky. And the way to do that is use something a bit pokey. I like a biro, they're pretty sturdy on the end. Uh, or you could use a compass or a screwdriver, but you want to be careful and uh, just check with your parents um, what they're happy with you to use. And you want to put something soft underneath. I'm using an oven glove uh, because I'm not precious if it gets any biro on it because it is likely to. You could use soft tea towel or uh, blue tack works but you have to move it around a lot. So this for me is the best option. Make sure it's where you need it to be. In fact, turn this around and then you can make sure you don't get your drawing. And just have a stab. 
Time for a light source. I've got a phone that has a torch on the back, but you could also use a normal handheld torch or you could cut a hole in the back and put a night light and just slot the box over on top of that. Another thing to do is to just stuff the box with fairy lights if you've got those. So using a phone torch, it needs to go in the back, not front, and it needs to go right at the bottom. So this is going to be folded upright, so that's the very base what the torch will be sat on. So you need to draw around the edge of your phone want a snug fit so that no light peels out the back. Stick a hole in there first. Okay. Will it fit through? Yeah, easy peasy. Finally, reassemble the box. Check all our edges can fold really nicely. You might just want to, because I've stuck the black card over the top, they're a bit stiff. So you might just want to give them a good fold. Make sure everything bends all right and the edges as well. Let's stick it all together. Should have helped that we folded all these edges. So let's start with the long side first. Along here. I'm going to need a nice long bit of sewing tape. Just cut it on there. There we go. Sometimes it's a bit handy you have an extra pair of hands here but don't worry if you don't just take time with it make sure it all matches up to the edges and put your hand inside so you can get a nice firm grip fold all those top bits in there we go at the bottom You just want to push the tape down. You've got your handy torch hole that you can just use to push that down. And it's pretty much there. You could just put your torch in now and you're ready to go, but I'm going to cover that top bit. Just going to hold that over the top like we did with the bowl and just draw around the edge. I'm going to keep, use those nice straight edges that already exist on the card. Just line the box up. Where's my glue? Spread that nice and evenly, make sure I get it on the edges. Okay, and plonk this. And neat. Well, that needs a bit more patience and wait till this bit dries. Okay, now we have our lovely moon lamp. So, all you have to do is turn your torch on. Torch ready to go, slip it in, and enjoy happy lantern making.